Chapter 2, Promoted Queen The next morning, like my first in this place, I awoke to the sound of a knock. And actually, just thinking about the title, Promoted Queen, are we going to have to have, like, another queen off <laughs> kind of thing like we did with uh, Heidi in Endgame? <laughs> Do I always have to have a rival that I'm like, uh <laughs> Why can't we be friends? Maybe we'll be friends. That would be nice. I can be hopeful. The difference was this time I knew where I was before the last dregs of sleep had faded away. I called for the person to enter, unsurprised to see Carrie. She had been stationed in front of my room all yesterday and said she would be sleeping across the hall even after she was off duty. I had a feeling I would be seeing a lot of her going forward. I wonder if she'll train us or if it'll be the new queen that's training us. I don't know. How are you this morning, Miss Leone? As well as can be expected, I guess. She set a silver tray on the bedside table and straightened, giving me a scrutinizing stare. The headache? There was a little bubble of irritation at the questions. Everyone liked to ask how I was doing, but it felt like they just wanted to make sure their new toy wasn't broken yet. The same as yesterday. Which meant it was mostly gone, but I was still a little woozy. Celeste has returned today and will be stopping by soon to take another look at you. Case's nurse? Or is she a medic? Celeste isn't a nurse, per se. Then what is she? And why did Case introduce her as his nurse? The latter is because sometimes it's more convenient to keep information close. As to the former, she is a rook. F-class. She's a fairy. One of many who support Mr. Kesa through the court. She can apply biokinetic regeneration to people other than just herself. That's why you've recovered from the Psy fatigue so fast. Interesting. So she's one of those rare people that can do that. Yeah, because we read that it comes naturally to your own biology, but applying it to someone else is a little different story. Applying biokinesis to other people? I didn't even know that was possible. It usually is not. Celeste's skills are unique, like many fairy espers. I'm certain we'll discover that your abilities possess unique attributes as well. Unique attributes? Are you... saying I'm an F-class? Were you not aware? Mr. Kesa made it clear to the rest of us that you are an F-class. That's why he was able to detect you in the first place. Oh? Interesting. I pressed my hands to my forehead, then combed them through my undoubtedly messy hair. Is everything alright, Miss Leone? Carrie, I just woke up. It's a little early for revelations about my status. I apologize. I didn't intend... It's fine. It's... Listen... As you can imagine, there are a lot of things I'm not being told here. There hasn't been time to discuss all the details with you. Or it's more convenient to keep me uninformed. <sighs> Carrie sighed and, after a brief hesitation, sat on the edge of the bed. Miss Leone, I don't believe that's the case. I wasn't told to keep any of this from you. And while I understand the situation is difficult, I hope you're able to find a way to be comfortable here. Find a way to be comfortable? That was asking a lot. I understand you're probably feeling overwhelmed, but I am here to keep you safe, Miss Leone, not keep you imprisoned. Safe from Kesa's father? She must have been trying to figure out the right way to answer that, given how long she just looked at me in silence. When she spoke again, I got the feeling she was choosing her words very carefully. There are many factions in the Fianchetto family, due to the fact that we've absorbed other groups on multiple occasions. Karis isn't the only enemy. But he is an enemy. I don't know why I hope to hear some sort of reassurance, but it certainly didn't come. Perhaps. But everyone in this part of the mansion is loyal to Kesa. And while it may be difficult for you to consider us friends, I hope you can see that, at the very least, we will not harm you. 
I really wanted to believe that. I... Kesa did seem to, at the very least, not want to hurt me. He'd had plenty of opportunity to do it. Or to threaten me. Which, aside from warning me about his father, he also hadn't done. If Carrie wanted to say anything else, she didn't get a chance. Hey, it's Celeste. There was another knock, and the door opened as Celeste, the woman from yesterday, stepped inside. It seemed most people use knocking as more of a way to alert you they were about to burst in than a way of asking permission to do so. It's like being at home with everyone else again. My brothers had always done the same thing. Celeste came towards me without smiling or introducing herself. It was Carrie who stood first. Ever the mediator. Miss Leone, this is Celeste. As I said before, she is a member of the court and answers to Mr. Kesa. Please, stop calling me Miss Leone. I prefer Morgan. Understood. Celeste, I believe you already know Morgan, though I'm not sure you've been properly introduced. Well, she was unconscious when we first met. Hard to be introduced that way. Sorry for being unconscious. Celeste stopped right in front of me and studied me for a long time. She didn't touch me, but for all I knew she was using her sigh to get my vitals or something. And? How do you feel today? Tired, stressed out, homesick. Scared? I can't do a damn thing about that. Any of it. I'm a doctor, and I'm barely that. I can put you back together when you're falling apart. And that's about it. So let's focus on that, yeah? She captured my face in her hands and tipped it up, staring down into my eyes. Headache? It's better. Just a little leftover dizziness. My eyes hurt. It looks like some side fatigue symptoms are lingering around still. But I think it's better to let them clear up on their own. Hyper-regeneration isn't great for someone not used to it. And you've had more than your fair share of it recently. She released me and turned away. I'll inform Kesa. I'll update him myself. He asked me to send you out as soon as you checked over Morgan. Things are tense here right now. When are they not? Kesa thinks it would be best if you didn't stay long with other factions prowling around, trying to assess the current situation with our new arrival. As she listened to Carrie, Celeste gave me a sidelong look. A frown settled over her features. Looks like your arrival is already making waves. Do me a favor and keep yourself out of trouble so Kesa doesn't need to drag my ass back here to heal you again. I think everyone would be better off that way. I don't usually go around looking for trouble. Somehow it was having an easy time of finding me lately, though. Good. And in the meantime, rest. She gave me a dry smile. Doctor's orders. It's the only real way to cure psi fatigue. And you look like you could still use it anyway. I'll do my best. She gave me a curt nod and left after that. So my being here is making waves. I knew very little about the power dynamics in Crimson, so I doubted I grasped the full meaning of that yet. But it didn't sound altogether good. Are you hungry? There are a few things scheduled for you today, but you haven't eaten since your arrival. I guess I am pretty hungry. I shelved other thoughts for now, but I may need to ask Carrie a few questions later, because I had a feeling that being uninformed in this place would not be good for my safety. Then why don't you get dressed and eat? I'll be back shortly. Alone again, I dragged myself out of bed. My limbs felt heavy, tired, and there was a strange weakness in my entire body, like I'd run a marathon. Though I guess given how much running I had done, that wasn't terribly surprising, was it? I was glad the screaming headache was gone, at least. I rubbed my eyes with a weary sigh. <sighs> there was something else bothering me, though. Something that was present behind the weakness, the tiredness. It was difficult to put it into words, this feeling that something was different inside me. That something had been irrevocably changed. It bothered me all through getting dressed. I finally sat on the edge of the bed again, staring down at the palms of my hands as if they'd reveal some revelation about what was truly going on with me. 
It wasn't as if I could feel some sort of mysterious power welling up inside or anything like that. It was more like an awareness that simply hadn't been there before. Or that had been such a quiet whisper I'd been able to pretend it wasn't. It was being aware on some level of the guard standing outside my door, feeling him there as if I was looking at him. I could gaze at an object and feel like I knew exactly how to pick it up and flip it over without touching it. It was strange, and a little frightening, because as much as I was now aware of, there was so much else about this ability I didn't yet understand. And it didn't matter that I wasn't keen on having any of it in the first place. It wasn't something I would be able to turn off because I wanted to. Maybe I should just... escape. Teleport away somehow. It wouldn't be unprecedented. But... where would I go? Nowhere in Delphine was safe for me. Even if I could replicate what I did before, where I needed to go was on the other side of the planet. It probably wasn't a viable option for now. Even if I could use that ability properly, moving myself to a random location nearby seemed like a fantastic way to get myself killed. So that means staying here. For now, anyway. Just for now. My plan had been to hide on the night side for a while anyway, so that hadn't changed. The difference was only that I knew more about who Jack really was, and who he really worked for. And it wasn't like I hadn't expected he wasn't telling me the full truth before. I was just disappointed to be right. So, at the top of the list of things not good for the appetite? Knowing armed guards were standing right outside. I made myself finish everything Carrie brought, only because I knew I needed to keep my strength up and recover quickly. When I finished, I gave a quick knock at the door to alert Carrie. It was strange having to knock on my own door, from the inside, to communicate with someone on the outside. This would be easier if I had my net access back. But that would mean I could contact other people, and I was sure they didn't want that. Mom is probably worried sick and I doubted I could politely ask these people to let my family know I was alive. I'm aware Celeste suggested you continue to rest, but Mr. Kesa asked me to give you a quick tour of the manor. This wing, anyway. He also wished me to introduce you to the man you'll be training with going forward. Do you have a preference which we start with? At this point, I was a little wary of more introductions. But starting with the tour was only putting off the inevitable. Though I suppose it wasn't fair to assume meeting this mysterious trainer would be unpleasant. Despite the situation. Despite some people being horrible. Not everyone was. Probably. Hmm. Meet the trainer, delay the meeting. Um, I think I'm a cautious person, right? I am cautious. But the way she worded it, like, I'm delaying the inevitable, kind of makes me think I shouldn't be cautious in this situation because Case is the one who's arranged for this trainer. It's not like Karis arranged for the trainer. So maybe I'm showing some trust in Kesa by meeting the trainer first. That's just a gut feeling I have. I'm gonna go with my gut feeling on this. I'll meet my trainer first. Might as well get it out of the way. At least if the meeting didn't go well, I could use the rest of the tour to get my mind off it. Very good. I believe Veli was going to meet us in the training room, so I'll take you there first. We are gonna train with the, the queen, the promoted queen. Okay, should be fun. I half expected the other guard to follow us when Carrie started leading me down the hall, but no, he stayed stationary by the door to my room. I wasn't sure what he was guarding if I wasn't in it, or if that meant they worried someone might sneak in and lie in wait for me or something. Regardless, the presence of armed guards was just a reminder that I shouldn't get too comfortable here. That wasn't a reassuring thought, and for a few moments, I was silent as I contemplated what this would mean for me going forward. Am I going to need to get used to a chaperone from now on? Perhaps not from now on, but for the foreseeable future, most likely. As much for your own protection as to... She trailed off, eyes shifting off to the left. 
to keep me from escaping? She made a face at that. Perhaps some see it that way. I do not. For one, if you attempted to leave against Mr. Fianchetto's orders, you would endanger yourself. But not only yourself. Here, everyone within a specific circle is connected. The actions of a single person can backlash onto many. For someone who doesn't understand how things are done and what expectations are, it makes more sense to ensure someone stays with you at all times. For everyone's benefit. I could understand that, I guess. In a strange way. Though I didn't like it. I'd heard that Delphine was run down. Poor. This mansion is... beautiful. We're in a wealthy district outside of Pythia. Power outages and supply shortages aren't much of an issue here as they are elsewhere. Have we read about this yet? The notoriously corrupt and dangerous capital city of Delphine. The bulk of Delphine's wealthy population lives in Pythia, and it remains the largest city of the most prominent nightside nation, housing a population of nearly 10 million people. It is highly industrialized with an expansive business district, and even more expansive slums deep in its central sectors as well as on its outskirts. It's an energy-hungry city that leaves much of the rest of Delphine fighting for leftover energy reserves, and though it is vast and beautiful, it is known to have a vibrantly terrible underbelly of crime and corruption from the well-known crime families to the smaller, seedier gangs and individuals lurking in the shadows. Delightful. I had heard the Fianchettos were wealthy. I never imagined they were also... crimson. I didn't finish that statement, but I suppose she knew what I meant anyway. Carrie shot me a careful look before speaking again. Much of what you've heard about the Fianchettos is likely to be wrong. If you have questions, I would recommend speaking to Mr. Kesa about it. I'm not sure I'm terribly inclined to talk to him about anything at the moment. Perhaps you should be. I think you may find yourself surprised by him. I wasn't sure what that was supposed to mean, but I was still annoyed at him for now. She stopped in front of another large door, setting her hand on it. Here we are. I braced myself for whoever was waiting behind the door. But when she pushed it open, Kesa was the only one in the room. This gym looks familiar. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Aw, oh, you gotta be kidding me. We got a picture of him working out too. Bless, 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 bless everything. He was dressed down, hair tied back, and either taking out frustrations on a punching bag or practicing to more effectively take his frustrations out on a living person. He didn't notice us at first and continued with his workout as if we weren't there. Sure, you know, you just ha so happened to be training when, you know, this girl was going to be meeting her trainer. Just, just so coincided. His brow was furrowed in concentration as he struck the bag over and over, skin glistening with a faint sheen of sweat that told me he'd been there for a while already. Ooh, wide angle, let's go. Very nice, very nice. Good form, good form. For the first time, I saw that the, I saw the throat tattoo wasn't the only one he had. Oh, good point. I see what you mean. And my eyes traced the wing design on the back of his arms. It was strange. Somehow they suited him, but I'd have pictured Jack as more the type. Maybe it's just what you do when you're a criminal. Damn. And that thought was also somehow jarring against the image of him in front of me. He didn't look like a criminal. Not that criminals had a look to them, I guess. Still, the knowledge of who he was warred somewhat with his appearance. Phew, look at this boy. Very nice, looking very nice. But he noticed us, and the spell was broken. An almost palpable chill settled over the room as his eyes rested on me for a space, before he turned to Carrie. Did you come here for Veli? We did, though he doesn't appear to be here. I sent him on a quick errand. I thought your tour would last longer. Miss Leone elected to come here to meet Veli first. Is that so? The corner of his mouth turned up slightly. Something that looked like it could have been trying to be a smile. I expected you to take a tour first. You seem like the type to be eager to explore the layout of the mansion. Find all the exits. I was told in no uncertain terms that no one leaves here alive. 
And I don't plan on dying yet. I see. It seems you are a little smarter than you look. Thanks. What the heck does that mean? And why did he look so amused at my outrage? <laughs> Rude boy. At any rate, I'm pleased all the efforts to get you here safely won't go to waste so easily. He draped a towel over his shoulder and began to move past us and out the door. I'm sure Veli will return soon. When he left, Carrie stepped further into the room. I suppose it goes without saying this room is used by multiple people. The walls are nano-infused alloys. They can withstand considerable force and are self-repairing, making the room suitable for psi training as well. I... see. Mr. Kesa also asked me to train you in some physical self-defense. Using psi isn't always convenient, and, at the very least, he'd like you to know the basics. The person training me in the use of Psy can't do that as well? I believe Mr. Kesa felt you might be more comfortable with me since it involves a lot of close contact. In any case, I already know some basics. Do you? That's surprising. Sasalis may not be in Delphine, but that doesn't mean it's a utopia. One of my brothers is in New Albion's public safety department, and he taught me, just to be on the safe side. I apologize if I offended you. That wasn't my intent. I let out a long breath, pinching the bridge of my nose. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm just a little on edge, that's all. I understand. It's been a stressful few days. To put it lightly, a few days ago I was worrying about exam results, and now? I gestured to the surrounding room. What were you studying, if you don't mind my asking? Archaeology. Somehow I didn't expect that either. What did you expect, exactly? I'm not sure. Something... softer. What did you hope to do with that sort of degree? What does anyone want to do with that sort of degree? I wanted to explore. To learn. I wanted to go off-world and walk in places no one has been in for thousands of years. Dion has some of the oldest structures in the solar system. I wanted to study them firsthand. Pretty sure I've read this already. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. I could tell what she was thinking. I didn't even need to be a psychic to see that. She thought I was more likely to be a librarian or a museum curator than someone scrounging in the dirt of some frontier colony for clues to what an ancient culture was like. If you were still in school there, does that mean you received nano-expansions in the past as well? My understanding is that New Albion uses a system of enhancements based on learning for those who remain in secondary education. Only for those consistently at the top of their class, which I was. So yes, I received multiple enhancements to help with mental focus and processing. Why? That's, I guess it's our, it's our guy. That'll be helpful. Oh, my goodness. Hello, sir. Veli, we've been waiting on you. So I've heard. The man leaning in the doorway did not seem happy to see me, though I was getting used to being looked at that way. Miss Leone, this is Veli Rall. He is a queen-ranked esper like yourself. Queen-ranked. The promoted infantry Kesa had been so dismissive about with his father. I looked away, suddenly feeling guilty. And what's that look about? Nothing. In particular. We will have to work on your ability to lie if that's the best you can do. I glared at him. If he expected me to be ashamed of not being a good liar, he'd be disappointed. I was remembering what Kesa said about you being an infantry-level esper that was promoted. Oh, is that what he said? It is. And does it make you feel superior since you're a naturally born queen then? Like maybe you're my replacement in this organization? I have no intention of replacing anyone, regardless if anyone else sees me that way. Good, because Kesa has to justify your existence to his father somehow, and exaggerating your importance is the easiest way. But you should remember you're here exclusively because Kesa is too soft-hearted. He didn't want to see you killed. It isn't as if you're needed. 
So don't get full of yourself. Um, stubborn or flexible? Um, let's be flexible. I don't intend to compete with you. Let's get on like a good, good footing here, sir. I don't want to be your replacement, Feli. And I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm just trying to stay alive. And I don't think you should be angry at me for remembering what someone else said. Feli scoffed, but looked me over one more time. At the very least, I guess you aren't as bad as I thought you'd be. I suppose I'll take that as a compliment. When are you going to be ready to start training? I wasn't told much more than to rest for a few days. Well, I guess I'll be sending you some meditation exercises for the time being. You need to learn to clear your head and focus if you ever want to get a handle on that sigh. With her nano expansions, it should be fairly easy for her to focus already. If that's true, she shouldn't have any issues improving her focus further with the techniques I'll send. He folded his arms and tapped his foot, looking like he'd rather be anywhere else than here. Whether or not I'm happy with your presence, Kesa ordered me to train you, so I intend to do it well. You will exceed every expectation Karis might have of you, and prove Kesa was right to save you. I gave him a thin smile, unsure why he seemed to expect me to argue with that. I have experience exceeding expectations, and I intend to prove the same thing. It's good we have the same goal, then. He didn't say longer than that. He made an excuse and quickly left Carrie and I alone. That went well, I suppose. Or at any rate, it hadn't gone as badly as I expected. Veli is not the easiest person to get along with, but you'll find that he, like everyone here, has his own story. Does that mean I'm not the only one being forced to stay here? Carrie seemed surprised when I said that. I guess I just thought that because... I shrugged helplessly. It's not like everyone here is a monster, or at least not everyone comes across that way, so I thought there must be something that compels some of you to be here, rather than wanting to be. After all, there may be people like Veli and Karis here, but Carrie wasn't like them. Celeste didn't seem like that either. Kesa... seemed to be in a gray area between hateful and kind as well. Like I said, we all have our stories. She repeated that phrase, and I couldn't tell if it was meant to be an affirmation to my statement or not. But for now, I decided not to press the issue. Shall we continue with the tour? Yeah, I guess we should. After that was over, Carrie took me around to all the areas I was allowed to see, whatever that meant. There weren't many of them. Outside the training room, there was a dining hall and a greenhouse that I completely loved. She showed me where Case's room was, and I got to see a garden through a window. The greenhouse was the best part. It was lush and beautiful, and it shocked me to learn that Kesa cared for it himself. It had belonged to his older brother, who had passed away. Aww. I asked more about that, but Carrie wouldn't say another word, and I got the feeling it was a sore subject. I didn't know anything else about the brother other than that he and Kesa had been close, and that his name had been Deimos. Man, this family knows it's, it's got, like, great names, I gotta say. They know how to pick good names. The rest of the afternoon I spent alone in my room, resting. I suspected I would need to get used to being here when I wasn't training, meeting people who would be rude to me, or being given brief tours with warnings about how stepping out of line could get me killed. For a while, I paced restlessly. On one hand, it was a little difficult to believe this was really happening. On the other, well, it was clearly happening. I never in my wildest dreams could have imagined this. Nothing in the days leading up to this could ever have factored into my visions of what my future would hold. I didn't even know how to react. So eventually I settled next to the bookcase with a book. I was staring down at it, barely seeing the words on the page when someone knocked. And then he just poof, he just poofed into existence. And there was no time for me to respond before the door opened and Kesa stepped inside. 
He took one look at me and stepped backwards, casting his gaze to the ground. I'll wait for you to get dressed. <laughs> Thanks. The door shut with a click, leaving me to scramble for clothes. I don't know why, but this boy gives me, like, such beast vibes from Beauty and the Beast. I don't know what it- I, I don't know if it's because it's like, Ah, you can only stay in the East Wing, never go to the West Wing. <laughs> and there's books, and he's just kind of, like, awkward, but also kind, but also gruff. I don't know, he just gives me beast vibes. <laughs> Which means I probably will fall for him. The door shut with a click, leaving me to scramble for clothes. That'll teach him to wait until I answer before he bursts in, I suppose. A few seconds later, I went to let him back inside. He was right there speaking to Carrie in a quiet voice when I opened the door and peered out. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's alright. He stepped in my room quickly, shutting the door behind him. Next time I won't be so quick to enter. Though I suppose I should take this as a sign you're getting comfortable here. It's more a sign I just hate pants. <laughs> I could arrange for some dresses or skirts to be delivered. You could wait until I say enter if you're so opposed to glimpsing my legs. Glimpsing my legs, what a great line. Your legs have nothing to- <laughs> Wait, what am I saying? He cut himself off, shook his head slightly, then sighed. This is a ridiculous argument. You started it. I believe you did, but it's immaterial. I apologize for bursting in unannounced. It's a habit I'll fix. Veli reported that you two met, and he's going to begin you on a meditation regimen. So he says. Carrie tells me you've already got a basic knowledge of self-defense techniques. Not advanced enough to avoid a kidnapping. Given who was responsible for that, some would call it an arrest. But at least it's something. On that topic, there was something I wanted to ask you. Very well. I've been thinking about this all afternoon. I'll answer any questions about your situation to the best of my ability. I... When you and I met in Sasalis, you kept trying to give me a ride... Were you just going to get me in your car and drive off with me? Was that the plan? If I could have gotten you in my car willingly, yes. It would have been convenient, simple, and much easier than what you actually went through. Has anyone ever told you you're a lousy kidnapper? In fact, Jack did. Twice. While laughing far more than the situation called for, I believe. That seems accurate. Unlike Endgame's Knight, I don't possess the ability to warp space-time. I can't shove someone into a car screaming without causing a scene. Ah, oh, you gotta bring up my ex right now <laughs> from the last route, Kesa. Rude. When you refused my offer for a ride, I felt the only alternative was to allow Jack to intercept you later on. Is it that important for you to have another Queen-ranked Esper? My father felt it was important to ensure no one else acquires one. I realize he'd been holding several books the entire time. Real books, and one visual display. He set them on the ottoman next to the bed. Your schedule will remain sparse for the next few days until your recovery is complete. I thought you might- I brought these for you. See, he brought books! He's got beast vibes, I'm telling you. Starting tomorrow, you'll take your meals in the dining room. Father wants you to be seen around the mansion. And the whole you will join me for dinner. That was not a request. <laughs> if I'm unable to escort you, Carrie will do so in my stead. But I will ensure I am present for meals. I don't want you... It would be best if you were not alone with him. He turned to leave after that, but paused at the door. I love how she's just squinting at him after that. Squint. Remember what I told you yesterday. Surviving the first meeting is nothing. Each day in this place is a battle, and you'll only win if you're very, very cautious. Veli and Carrie both tell me you're outspoken. I can appreciate that this is a well-regarded quality elsewhere. But it won't serve you well here. I hope you remember that. He left with that remark still hanging in the air. 
charming. So basically, sit down, shut up, and do as you're told. Otherwise, someone might murder me. Good to know. I went to where he'd left the books in display. The display looked to have video content about meditation and body stretches. The books... I shifted them around to read the titles. Curiously, one was a book about Delphine and its political history? Odd choice. Another was about espers and their history. The last one was the one that caught my eye. Origins, Footsteps into the Past. I picked it up and flipped through the pages, curious. A book about the ruins in Delphine? <laughs> this guy, he's so awkward. <laughs> Oh, what an awkward boy, my goodness. I couldn't quite contain the little flutter of pleasure when I realized the topic. The Delphinian ruins had so little written material on them. Not just in the form of actual books, which were rare enough anyway, but in general, I'd never seen or heard of this book. Well, he's got connections. I retreated to the bed and, for a while, was finally able to forget about Crimson and everything else as I read. It didn't occur to me until much later that Kesa had gone out of his way to find this book for me because he knew my interests. And I couldn't decide whether to be pleased he made the effort or annoyed that he thought it made up for anything. <laughs> both. Both is good. But at least it gave me something to get my mind off things. That counted for something, I suppose. 